Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the one, the only, the Godfather of Vape himself, Mr. Phil Busado. It's not Hercules, it's not Odysseus, it's the Lutheran. I think it's a fantastic device. I think it's a rock solid device. Um, this one I'm starting to get to know a little bit better. This is the DNA 200. Okay. I mean, this is going to be a pretty big thing. I think it needs to be perfect coming from Evolve at this point. Right. But Evolve really has opened up the brain of the DNA uh, 200 and they've given it to you on a silver platter. You can see everything that this device is doing via software, though. Right. So you got to feel comfortable with connecting it to your computer and looking at all, all, all the software and all the, the data points. But um, I mean, like if anybody were to ask me today, what device should I go buy? And here's my price point, and here's my, the wattage that I hear the features. I would say an SX Mini M class. It's just, um, it's just a solid piece right now. It really is, you know? And you know, there, there are, I don't necessarily look at like very, very high end products because I know they're out there, right? So I, I kind of try to focus on the more mainstream products that, that the general public would be more interested in. And that, that's one of my favorite pieces right now. I like the Vapor Shark, right? But the Vapor Shark comes along with DNA 40 glitches. So how do I recommend that to anybody? It's tough, right? So yeah, I like the M Plus. What do you like? What do you like? Demon likes his ego, his pink ego. He's very happy with that. I prefer regulated vaping, so. Uh... To me, my favorite device is what I grab when I leave the house, and I usually grab a Vapor Shark DNA 40. It's small, easy to charge. I don't like carrying batteries around with me. Uh, anything that's regulated with a DNA chip, I enjoy. The SX Mini, I enjoy. These are all good devices, all-day devices that you don't have to carry around batteries and spend it all day, you know, charging them up as well too. So. Again, it all depends on what you prefer. Some people like two mods, some people like box mods. Uh, I think we're seeing a big trend in box mods this year. I think that the tube is slowly going away. Uh, and that has to do a lot with people getting tired of having to carry five and six batteries around with them as well, too. So anything that's a box mod type, pink, whatever, you know, I'll carry it with me, so. It's <laughs> a great shirt, by the way. By the way, how much did he pay you to wear that shirt? That's what I don't know. He's got good money. My, my first thoughts on the DNA 200 are why the fuck did you do 200 watts? That's my first thought. You want to know what my second thought is? Okay. Um, my second thought is configurable like no other. All right. Via the software again. So, you know, it's going to be one of those devices that may not appeal to everybody. It's going to appeal to the cloud chasers and the high wattage vapor simply because it's a 200 watt device. It's going to appeal to the, the um, let's call them the tech geeks in vaping because of what you can do with that device, because of how configurable it is. You know, if you don't like the screens, change the screens. If you don't like how preheat works, change preheat. Um, another thing that they just released in their firmware are um, user slots like uh, configurable user slots. So you can store, and you can name the slot too, so you can call it K-Fun, you can call it Dripper, you can call it Dimitri, you can call it whatever, I, I would recommend calling it Dimitri. Um, <laughs> call it whatever you want, but you can program a whole bunch of stuff into that slot in addition to just the temperature or just the wattage, right? So it's really, um, it's gonna be as easy to use as any other DNA device, but it's also gonna give you customization like you've never had before with the DNA. The other good thing about the DNA, 200 is that finally, finally, we have firmware upgradability, right? Which is a big problem with the DNA 40. Because the DNA 40 that you buy on Monday may not be the DNA 40 that you buy on Friday, and that's not a good thing, right? Because if you buy it on Monday, I might get it on Friday, and I got a feature that you don't have, and you just got screwed, right? At least now with the 200, they do have the firmware upgradability, and I think it's long overdue with them. Yeah, so it's a good thing. You sure can, go ahead, really. Right now? I, I like the chip. I like the the availability of options that you have. Finally, you can pretty much do anything that you want to. It's not going to apply to 90% of the community, though. It's going to apply to a lot of the hobbyists. One thing that does bother me, though, is where do we stop? Okay. So we went we went from 20 watts to 50 watts to 100 watts to 150 watts. Now, Evolve finally puts out that high-powered chip. What do you think is going to happen next? 
the Chinese are going to look at this and like, well, we need to put out 300 watts now. And what does it stop? So we really have to take that under consideration, especially when we're trying to help smokers, bringing more people into the community. I don't want people to feel that feel that you need 200 watts to stay off cigarettes, and that's not the case. It's absolutely not the case. We can't lose our focus. That is helping people get quit smoking. Let's say, you know, let's talk a little bit more about that. I feel honestly like as an industry we've lost our way a little bit, okay? More and more products are coming out for vapors, right? The, the, the products that are coming out are being targeted towards vapors. I don't see enough of products coming out for smokers, all right? And I think that's a big, big problem because in my heart and soul, I do this for tobacco harm reduction. I do this to save people's lives, okay? I, thank you. Whatever that is. Um, I mean, that's why I do what I do, right? And some of the products that are coming out, I even question, and I know everybody's a little bit different, but I even question how successful somebody would be quitting smoking with a sub ohm tank versus like an Aspire Nautilus or a Kanger Aero tank because it's more that mouth to lung experience, it's more that experience that they're similar to from smoking. You get into a sub ohm tank, you might, you know, you get the clouds and everything and it's that direct lung inhale and it's like a really low nicotine and it may not be what a smoker needs, right? And we need to focus on the smoker. We need to, we need to save lives. We need to be about tobacco harm reduction, right? So, yeah, that's, that's something that, that's important to me. You know, because if, if we find it, because we could all find out tomorrow that blowing clouds at 200 watts and like vaping down 50 mils of e-liquid a day is not very good for us. That could happen, okay? And if I'm doing these videos and my videos are attractive to a younger generation and the younger generation, they weren't gonna smoke, they weren't gonna vape, but all of a sudden now they start vaping, then I'm no better than the Marlboro Man and that bothers me. That weighs heavy on my shoulders, okay? I'm, I kind of take it seriously what I do, right? I'm kind of as cute as Marlboro Man. All right, any other questions? We got, I'm on a fun question before you get too serious. Go ahead. Oh, am I still using nicotine? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I, just, I am still a smoker at heart, and I vape the way I smoke. I am still a 12 milligram nicotine in my K funds. Okay. I still like that mouth to lung experience. I still like that strong thumpy throat hit that I get in the back of my throat. Okay. If I, I, I play, I mean, you just saw me, I, you know, I blew a couple clouds, I got my dripper on me, I, I got a temperature control coil in there, set the 200 watts crazy stuff, right? And I like that, the hobbyist side of me likes that, but it doesn't satisfy my need as a smoker. For that, I need this, right? I still need my nicotine. I was a smoker for a long time, I was a smoker since I'm 16 years old, right? Let, let, let me tell you something that's really funny. You're asking about weaning down, coming down to... All right, so I hear this a lot. People say, I started at 18, but now I'm down to three. How many meals do you make? Your body tells you how much nicotine that you want. Even if you come down from nicotine from 18 to three, <coughs> chances are you're going from vaping three meals a day to 10 meals a day. So your nicotine is gonna be the same. It's a placebo effect. This is the beauty about this device. This is why the regulators cannot regulate this. We control it. If I need more nicotine, I'll vape more. If I want less nicotine, I'll vape less. It's something that is not, there's no formula to it. There's no dosage to it. They're trying to regulate this as a device that's gonna give you the same dosage of nicotine all the time. We don't want that, and that's why it works. That's why everybody's here, because we're all fucking ex-smokers, and that's what the government needs to understand, and that's why they need to back off. So, Nicotine is why I vape. Woo! Stay off cigarettes. Yeah. Oh, I got a drummer. Did you see that? That's extra. <laughs> By the way, before we get into the next question, I do want to bring one up. A very serious, important issue here, because I've talked to a lot of you guys here, and I've talked to a lot of the vendors here. The TPD that is coming out next year here is the death of the industry. Everything that you see here will not be around two years from now, so you need to wake up. You need to get involved, you need to... Advocacy should be part of the pioneering part of vaping. We're all pioneers, we're all new in this industry. If you don't understand what the TPD will do for vaping and for the business community here in the UK and across Europe, 
you really need to go back and read some of the stuff that is in there. It is the death of the industry. It's extremely important that every vapor, vape shop employee, vape shop manager, distributor, manufacturer, even the, your family that does not vape but sees the benefits that vaping has brought to you, you all need to come together and fight this. It is unacceptable for the government to control your lives when you're making Woo! better. Woo! Wake up. Please get involved. Sign the petition that Totally Wicked has out there. Come together. Leave your egos for the stores and come together as a community, even if you don't like somebody. You have to come together to save lives. It's all about the millions of smokers that are not in this room here that we still need to reach. So please, please fight the TBD. It is not a good thing. And if any company tells you, except if they're a big tobacco company or Japan tobacco, if any company tells you we're ready for the TBD, just laugh in their face. Because there's nobody inside here that would be able to survive this. Yeah, advocacy. Advocacy is really strong. We all need to be, I mean, he's the advocacy guy, I'm the device guy, I make the fun videos, he's, he does the important stuff. But, you know, even in the States, some one of these days, like, FDA could come in and just take all our shit away. And then what's going to happen? Everybody's going to do this. They're going to do, what do I need to do to fight that? Well, guess what? It's too fucking late. Okay? So it is important to stay on top of it now, right? All right, more questions. Fun questions. We had a fun question, maybe? Not necessarily, all right. <laughs> you know what? We had a big, long conversation about that. What do we think about vaping being a big, giant, male kind of population thing? Well, I know both of us would like to see a lot more women out there. I mean, you know, like, look at the, look at the, the ratio is not very good here. Right? Austin, you have a little applause for that? Like, guys, a little applause? Um, but I don't, I think the, um, the female population is a, it's a wildly untouched market. I think it's an untouched market in devices. I think it's an untouched market in liquids, and it needs to be addressed. Hmm? Oh, I see what you want. Okay, so what she wants, like we have all the female models walking around. You want Dimitri in his underwear is what you're asking for, right? Okay. Let me tell you something. I've seen Dimitri in his underwear at every event that I go to when we stay in the same hotel. It's not a pretty sight. Okay, so I would go with the male models as opposed to... But you're right, though. I mean, it, it is. And some women may be offended by that. You want it to be equal. Okay. But... but but I hear you and I agree with you, but it's not only in the, in the models and what you see walking around the events, it's the devices and it's the e-liquids as well. You know, taking a device that is like meant for everybody else and making it pink does not necessarily meet the female market, right? So it is an untapped market and, and you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of vendors uh, about that, you know, that we need more female devices. As a matter of fact, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. We, we had a long conversation last night at the bar about this, about this particular subject. Because to me, tobacco harm reduction is for every human being, right? So there's a couple of untouched markets, especially in the States as well, too. Female crowd, black people. I mean, African Americans are a big population of smokers, yet the products don't seem to be geared to attract them to try them out. I think it is because it is a male-dominated, it's a gadget item, it's a technology product. A lot of the males are a little bit more gadgety with the computers, just like we were. When we started, we didn't have this. So we had to get online and try to find better ways to improve our vaping, and it kind of transitioned into that. I think it's up to the guy vapors to bring the women in as well, too. Don't make them feel like they're dumb. Don't make them feel like they can't build. Don't make them feel that you're better than them. So it takes a community to change it around, and then the vendors will start supplying it. If the vendors don't see the demand for it, they're not gonna make anything out there for them. So it takes all of us again to bring him in and reel him in and welcome him to the community. And if it takes male models to do that, Austin, I mean, there you go, we got him right there. <laughs> or maybe in your next booth we can have a couple of male models. There we go, we'll make it happen for you, okay? Other questions? Absolutely, absolutely. Big Tobacco is behind the TBD, I'll tell you that, because they are organized. The tobacco companies, they work together. They don't, they don't want you guys to come up here and take over their industry. 
So they go, they approach the regulators, and what they say is, hey, we have a product on the market, it's a stick battery, it's safe, it does not leak. Look at those guys over there with the open vapors and the formaldehyde and all this bad stuff that they're putting out. And the regulators are looking at this and they're like, well, they're right. Can you imagine that? <laughs> they're believing big tobacco companies have killed people for hundreds of years. What are we doing? What are we doing? Are we approaching them? Are we educating them? I was in Washington, D.C. a couple weeks ago and I went to talk to congressmen. I walked up to a staffer, I had a bunch of people with me, and I told everybody to bring a box mod. Because I didn't want them to think that we were big tobacco and had, you know, small vape pens. We pulled our boxes out, and she literally jumped back a couple of steps. She got scared. She's like, what is that? I've never seen anything like that. It's 2000, it's 2015, and she's never seen a box mod. That's how bad we are. It's our fault. We need to approach the regulators, tell them what we're using, how are we using it, educate them, and let them make a conscious decision how they want to regulate the product. We're not doing that. All we're saying is, don't regulate us. Well, that's not reality. <laughs> it's coming. So it's up to us to change it. Again, our fault. <laughs> you know what's more fun? You know, it's funny you mentioned the whole female thing and like, look what happened. Uh, it's okay with me. Uh, <laughs> 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 Alright, well, do we have any fun questions? Uh, how about a question? Uh, My favorite reviewer? Um, and actually, two reviewers kind of got me started, okay, Grim Green. Um, but actually a local guy who I'm trying to meet, but he hasn't been at any of these events yet, is Scott, I guess he's 69, right? I mean, Scott taught me how to build, okay? I, back in the day, I think the Odysseus, that horribly complex rebuildable um, with leads that we had to solder together. I would watch Scott's video, pause it. Scott told me to do this, I'm gonna do this. Play. Oh, Scott told me to do this, I'm gonna do that. Yeah, so, I mean, those are the two guys that I kinda grew up, grew up, well, you know, watching, really. Um, Nick is a great person, I met him a whole bunch of times. Very warm, very welcoming, kind of a regular guy. You know, but I, I'd really like to get my picture taken with Scott, right? I, I'm not saying this because he's here, and I don't wanna blow up his ego anymore. <laughs> but, uh... I, it, it's my belief that feel, as far as technical reviews, is is at the top of the line. Because if you're going to do a review on a product, you want to know everything about it. You're spending your hard-earned money on it, right? So you want to make sure that you get accurate information on the device. Feel, Nick was one of the first guys that I watched. I bought my first mod based on Nick's review. And, uh, and there's a lot of guys out there that are doing reviews. I think it's important, though, for the people that watch YouTube, to relate to that reviewer. Find somebody that matches your style of vaping. Because if you're vaping on a sub tank and you go watch somebody that's doing all these crazy builds, don't think that this is what you need to stay off cigarettes. So find somebody that has the same taste as you, vapes the same style of you, and follow them. Or you get more information about somebody that vapes like you than trying to watch all these reviews with the different styles. Because there's hundreds of styles to vape. Find somebody that matches you. That's a really good comment, too, because how we're vaping is going like this more and more and more every day, right? So, you know, I might be mouth to lung, we got crazy you know, builders over there blowing huge clouds. So I can't focus on all styles of vaping anymore because all styles are just growing and growing and growing, right? So I kind of have to focus on my little niche, what I do. So, yeah, what, exactly what he said. Find somebody not only that you relate to personality-wise, but also you relate to vape-wise, how they're vaping, right? Sure. <laughs> uh, have we heard about what was it, Rob Squire? What, what did um, you know? He lost his hearing uh, because of vaping PG. Uh, I say, let me vape more PG, so I don't have to listen to that bullshit anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I believe in that. So what else? Keep them coming. Keep them coming. What's my favorite flavor personally? I think something called Tribute, it's a lychee pear, that's pretty much my all day, but I mean, I experiment with all kinds of flavors. Um, I also like, uh, what is it, Enjoy's, um, I, no, not chocolate. I can't think of it, see how much I vape that one. And I tell you what, in all honesty, not making his head any bigger, he's uh, Mountain Oak Vapors, who uh, Dimitri works for, is coming out with a new uh, juice, I don't even remember the name of this one. I just, yeah, I just grabbed it out of his uh, chest here, White Lotus, it's a um, apricot. Primarily, what else is it having? 
papaya and nectarine, and it's I think it's like it's going on my favorites list. But you know what's funny is because he even told me he's like, don't add it to your favorites list. Don't even talk about the juice. I said why? He goes because people are going to associate me and you together. You're going to think that like I'm in his pocket. You know I have promoted so many e liquids that I have loved that I have no idea who's making them. Right? This one just happens to be one that I love that I know who's making it. Okay? It, it, it doesn't matter if it comes from him or if it comes from anybody else. If I love a liquid, I'm going to say good things about it. And if anybody wants to say that, well, I'm talking good about the liquid because of my association with Dimitri, fuck you. That's not the truth, right? I'm, I'm just speaking the truth about something that I happen to really, really like, right? All right, more questions, fun Sam, ones. What do, do you got? Did everybody see the photo on Facebook of uh, me at TSA going through? Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tell you the story. That is uh, totally his idea. I walk in. Well, he. Well, I was in the lounge at the, the airport, and he walks in, barely says hello to me, right? All he says was, I need a picture of Cranky Phil. I'm like, why? You know? Just just do it. Just do it. I'm like, you know, because I'm, I don't care. I'm all about a good time. So I take a picture of Cranky Phil. And then before you know it, there's my picture with two dildos and a uh, bin uh, all over Facebook. That picture, by the way, I think it has like 1,100 likes, 28 shares, and something like 600 plus comments. Yeah, okay. You win. You win that one. You absolutely win. So payback will be a bitch. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, see? I know. Look at that. I call it mini D. Alright, what else? Ladies and gentlemen, the please welcome to the stage. Is this we want to know him, the Godfather and Great himself, Mr. Phil Gusado. We have his politicians for 67 years old that were put to back and controlled back in the 70s and 80s. And it's not Hercules, and it's not Odysseus, it's Demetrius. When they're tobacco companies are saying, oh, 9 out of 10 doctors recommend our brand of cigarettes. You might be too young to remember, but it did happen. So here we are now, we're stepping up to the plate with a new product and we're following the same footsteps. It's time for this industry to become ethically responsible for the product that they're selling, whether that has to do with the ingredients, with the manufacturing, with the way that we promote the product, whether it's the point of sale, and be able to relay that to the government as well too. Because all the government sees is a wild, wild west. It's time to stop that. We're big boys, you gotta pay to play, step up to the plate, explain to the regulators what we're doing and have some ethics and some responsibility in the product in all phases, from the manufacturing all the way down to the user. Absolutely. And it takes guys like you to step up and say, we've had enough. Demand, demand from your suppliers to do that for you. And we might be in a better place next year, if we're still here, based on the TBD, uh -huh. which is really bad. Did I mention yeah. the TBD is bad? Yeah. Okay, so I wanna make sure I got that across. I have nothing against weed, personally. I don't think two should mix. I don't, I don't have, if anybody wants to smoke weed, that's fine with me. I don't have any problem with it. I think this product is a tobacco harm reduction product. We need to focus on smokers. We shouldn't mix the two. Because it confuses again these 60 year old politicians. I created an association in, in, in the United States called the Tennessee Smoke Free Association. It's a model that's being copied now across states in the you know, all across the U.S. People ask me, why did you call it Smoke Free Association? Why didn't you call it Vaping Association? When you go up to a politician and you say the word vape, they're confused. Vape, vaping, vape pen, weed. You know, what is exactly vaping? There's many ways to vaporize different products. Smoke free is exactly what we are. We don't smoke anymore. And we shouldn't associate the two products together, in my opinion. It's definitely hurting the cause. Uh, any, any fun questions out there? By the way, um, Stan, she makes you look 10 times better standing next to you. That's fun. <laughs> okay. yep. Any other questions? Fun questions? Like drama questions? Any other kind of questions? What's that? Smooth or crunchy? Peanut butter? I'm smooth. What are you? Okay, smooth. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Got one? 
Uh, I have something kind of in mind there too. Some uh, a kind of a project that's going on behind the the scenes that's kind of close to my heart. So I, I'd like to see that that happen. Yeah. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Go ahead. I think it's ridiculous. When you have market, when you have people that handle social media for companies and they go out there and they make statements that just make you look silly. I mean, make you look like you're 12 years old. How can, I mean, as good as the company can be, as brilliant as the designers are, when you're making public statements like that, it makes you look like you're run by 12 year olds. Cloning is not going to stop. I hate to tell you that. That's just, you have to deal with that as a manufacturer. You have to be able to put out a product, and as soon as it's cloned, you have to have it in the pipeline to put your other product behind it. To go after and trademark Chinese names, it's silly. Not only is it silly, but it's turning off a lot of vapors as well, too. So you're trying to accomplish and protect your brand, and you're hurting it more. Let your product speak. If your product's good, people are going to buy it. You don't have to hype it up. You don't have to create drama situations for it. So, I was disappointed with, with the company, I'll be honest with you. And I know one of the guys that's involved, he's a brilliant designer. Uh, but it's overall, how can you support that? I can't. It just makes us look silly. We're fighting RJR Reynolds in the United States that spent $250 million last year on lobbying. And we're sitting there talking about the evil monk. What the fuck? I mean, seriously, grow up. <laughs> We've had a great time. We had a great time in the last meet here. I think the vaping community is fantastic. I think once again, you've proven that you're going to come out to these events and support them. Um, we had great fish and chips yesterday. That was fantastic. That was great. And mushy peas. I've never had mushy peas before. They were good, right? And I have learned to say, and I think pretty well at this point, fuck off Mila. Right? Is that good? Okay. <laughs> Any other good questions, bad questions, advocacy questions? Because if not, I'll say it. I'm going to give you back to the uh, the giveaways, and I know you want the giveaways more than you want to listen to us, right? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What was the bill that California just vetoed a few days ago? California just vetoed a bill. It doesn't matter if you vape an ego, or if you're on a Joy 510, or if you're blowing a cloud with a .005 on, you know, twisted kangaroo coil. <laughs> that doesn't matter to me. What matters to me most is that we are all vapors, we are not smokers anymore, and together we are a whole lot stronger than we are separate. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to teach you my 75% rule, and I say this on my podcast in the United States for the last couple of years. I know M's there from her blog, and she's heard it many of times. My 75% rule is that when it comes to vaping, I don't have to like you to fight with you. All I have to do is agree 75% with you on what we wanted to fight for this product. Because at the end of the day, I think all of us here have a 75% common goal. And that is to keep vaping available, affordable, and accessible for the millions of smokers that are going to die this year from tobacco-related illnesses. Keep that 75% close to your hearts as you're moving ahead here with this TBD battle. It's really, really important. I'm sorry, I'm doing my thing. I do make videos still, you know. All right, any last questions before we wrap this up and give it back to the giveaway? Oh, we have a few more. We'll, we'll wait. Go ahead. Just don't worry. The giveaways aren't going anywhere. I promise. Hold that. I'm going to say stop. 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 That's a, that's a new question. Uh, do you think that nicotine should be sold separately to avoid the issues? Why are we always trying to manipulate the system? It's not going to happen. Nicotine is the easiest product for the government to control. There's only a few importers of nicotine. Why should we hide? Why should we go underground? I hear all the time, oh, it's going to blow up the, the black market. Why? How is that going to help smokers when I have to tell my aunt, hey, meet me down in the corner, I'm going to sell you a 30 mil in an ego kit. <laughs> no, stop that. You should be proud that you quit smoking. You should be proud that you're going to live longer and you should be able to share with other people. Try stop. Try trying to find ways to manipulate this. It's not going to work. We're talking about the government. <laughs> We're not talking about some guy on the street. They're going to find a way to stop it whether you separate it or not. They want to classify it as a tobacco product. I don't agree with that. But we can fight to have a modified risk product category because, let's be honest, is this product 100% safe? No. 
We weren't born with a PV in our mouth like we weren't born with a cigarette in our mouth. The best thing for you to do is not to do anything. But we switched to this because it's less harmful. And the government needs to realize that they have to regulate it, but they have to regulate it as a less harmful product. And be proud of what you do. Was there one more? Okay, yeah, you got the last one. Go ahead. What do I think about what? Oh, that? The, uh, the cloud maker, right? Is that, that's what it's called. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, it's basically a totally customizable, interchangeable, open source device, right? I think that's brilliant. Uh, one of the things that I say, I don't know if you, any of you listen to From the Chair, okay? It's this little thing that I do on the tasterjuice.com website. Uh, and it's just kind of like me talking to you about ideas, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Um, and I said, I compared two companies to two computer companies. I compared Evolve and Yeehee to um, Intel and AMD, okay? Now you have computer companies, you have HP, you have Dell. What do they do? They sell you a box, but they give your choice of the CPU that you want to use in the box, right? And I see that as something we're going to see in vaping more and more and more, right? Vapor Shark may not be able to survive anymore using just DNA. They might have to start offering um, Yeehee chips as well. So an open source platform like that, I think is terrific. Um, not only terrific from uh, giving you your choice uh, perspective, but also terrific from making your device not so out of date like a week from now, right? If it's truly modular, and like when the next DNA board comes out, or the next Yeehee board comes out, you can just buy a sled and a board and pop it into your mod. I think that's terrific, right? Yeah. Vapors have gas. Okay? Gas. We all have gas. It's called gear acquisition syndrome. When something comes out, we want it. So I, I gotta buy every piece that comes out. I just have to have every single piece. But yeah, and what happens is vapors start... I thought I was supposed to save money doing this. And also, I'm not saving so much money anymore. Well, it's because you gotta buy every single product. You, but you don't. You really don't. I mean, at the end of the day, a volt is a volt is a volt, right? Yeah, sure, they come in pretty shiny packages every now and then. But, you know, find something that's really good. Find something that you like and, and, and stick with it. You don't have to spend that much money. But if we can have devices that kind of future-proof your device a little bit and make it less expensive that you don't have to buy an entire new device, you can just buy an upgrade for it, I think it's terrific. Yeah. So I know they contacted me. I know I'm supposed to be getting something. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'll take a look at it if it comes out. Okay? Last minute? Last one? You know what makes my shit itch? <laughs> you know, you know that? We learned that last night. That was a new. Uh, that was a new. Whatever works for you is the best advice. And please, please, for the love of God, don't make anybody else's baby feel like they're obsolete because of what they're using. If it's working for them, they're staying off cigarettes. That is the best device for them. We love new shiny things. We're more of the extreme of the community. But listen, we don't represent all vapors. There's hundreds of thousands of vapors out there that are not here. They're happy, they're off cigarettes, that's what counts to me, and that's what should count for everybody. Thank you guys, we appreciate you. Thanks for having us again here, thank you. Alright, let's hear it for Phil and Demetri guys.